Today, I want to talk about those days are today. Those days are today. And I'm going to cover three areas where the Bible specifically points to our time being the time of the end times. Specifically, it's like multiple areas in the Bible uh, that point to our time being the end times. But I want to talk about three specific areas today because this is important because the Bible, throughout the Bible, it constantly tells us that we should be aware that we're in the end times as children of God. Um, of course, you don't know the day, you don't know the time, but that doesn't mean you don't know the signs of the time. Uh, and Jesus talked about it with the parable of the virgins, the, the five virgins who, were, who were, weren't ready for the bridegroom's return, or the masters who uh, were, uh, the servants who wasn't ready for their master's return. I mean, throughout the Bible, it tells us that we should be aware that we're in the end times. All through Revelation, all through the Gospels, through Paul's letters. So today, like I said, I want to cover three areas. There's many of them, but there's three areas today I want to cover that point to those days are today. Now, the first area, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. The first area I want to point to is in Revelation chapter 11. And this is uh, about the two witnesses, the testimony of the two witnesses. And it says in our verse 7, starting with verse 7, and when they shall, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and shall kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and the kindreds and the tongues and the nations shall see their, body, their bodies three days and a half and should not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. After three and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Now, this is very important because what this shows is that we're in the time when these prophets, when the two witnesses will appear. We're in, in that time period. And we can know this because it said these prophets will lie dead in the street for three and a half days. Now, back then, this was written in 96 AD uh, by, most people say, by Apostle John and the island of Patmos. So if when people looked at these uh, verses back then, they had to think they were allegorical, that they were may maybe metaphors, or they may have a deeper meaning. Because <clears throat> for three and a half days, you couldn't, you know, everybody in the world back then couldn't see Someone lying in the street for three and a half days. I sent each other gifts. It took them six months, years to visit places. That's why when they went visit somewhere, they stayed for two years or a year. Because it took them so long to get there. So they must have saw these uh, verses as sort of allegorical. You know, uh, or some deeper meaning. But today, today we can understand these verses, fully understand these verses, because we know exactly how people will see their uh, bodies lying in the street for three and a half days. We have television, we have smartphone, we have computers. We know how people can send gifts to each other three and a half days. We got FedEx, we got Amazon, 
overnight shipping, same day shipping. So we know that three and a half days, this is our day. This is in our time. We are the ones that can understand these scriptures. And it's important for us to understand these scriptures. That's why they're in there. You know, God wanted us at this time, the children of God, to understand that we're in that time period. And we're in a time period where three and a half days, everyone in the world can see these two witnesses lying in the street and can send each other gifts over three and a half days. Couldn't happen back then in 96 AD or 1000 AD. But today, we perfectly understand these scriptures, which lets us know that we're in the end times. We're in these times. Here's another one. Now, uh, this is in Matthew uh, chapter 24. And to set it up, uh, Disciples asked Jesus, you know, what would be some of the signs of the end times? And Jesus, you know, talked about earthquakes and rumors of wars and false prophets. And then he says this, he said, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When its branch is yet tender and put its forth leaves, ye you know, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see these things, Know that it is near, even at the doors. He's saying that his return is near, even at the doors, when you see these things. Then he said in verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all of these things are fulfilled. <clears throat> now this is, ooh, who, who, that this is very, very important, man. I'm, because the parable of the fig tree for years, biblical scholars, people who study prophecy, said that the parable of the fig tree is about Israel becoming a nation. So for years, it was predicted that Israel would become a nation. It was predicted. And that finally happened in May in 1948, Israel officially became a nation, an independent nation. And so that fulfilled this prophecy of the parable of the fig tree. And so when the Bible says, this generation shall not pass, it's talking about the generation of the fig tree. The generation of Israel in 1948 shall not pass. Now, everyone born in that generation, and I wrote 72, 73 years old, Everyone born, that means that time is short. We don't know the day. We don't, you know, a lot of people like to throw that scripture around. We don't know the day at a time, but we know the signs of the times. And scriptures implore us, implore us as children of God that we should know the time, signs of the time that our King, our Lord Jesus Christ, is returning. And we're in the signs of the times. You can look around the world today. Look what's going on in the world today. And you should you could know that we in the signs of the time, but more importantly, we know because it's told us in the Bible. And it's told to us for a very specific reason that we should be prepared. We should be prepared as children of God. And we should tell as many people as we can that Christ is coming back. That Christ is returning. So this generation, this generation the generation of the fig tree of Israel shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And it says, when you see uh, Israel become a nation and put it forth, you know that summer is nigh. You know it's not even at the doors, even at the doors. And like I said, everyone from this generation, that generation of the fig tree is 72, 73 years old, so time is short. Any day, any day now, Christ can return. And we're supposed to know these things. We're supposed to tell each other about these things. We're supposed to spread seeds about these things. 
so God can give the increase because we're in these times. And the Bible lets us know as children of God, we should know that we're in these times. Now here's the third one. Now, this one says, starting again, we're still in Matthew 24, but we're going to verse 21. Now, this one says, uh, For then shall be great tribulation, such as not was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened. Now, this is important. And except those days shall be shortened. There should no flesh, no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now, this is Christ talking. Again, let me read it again. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. This is a prediction about our time. This is for when people were reading this from back then, uh, years ago, they probably couldn't under, fully understand these scriptures. Maybe it was allegorical, like I said before, or metaphors. And that's because you, know, you think, well, how can no flesh be saved? What is he talking about and it, in, in those days? But today, in our time, we know exactly what he's talking about exactly what he's talking about because nuclear weapons can kill all flesh there can no flesh be saved 10 or 20 times over so we're in a time period our day we're in a time period that no flesh can be saved and what this also talks about and, and this and it's amazing it shows us that god is outside of space and time because god must have saw a time where there was no flesh saved. Where, where we probably killed each other off. And so he shortened those days, the days of Christ's return. He shortened those days for the elect's sake. So this, again, tells you, shows you that God is outside of space and time. So those days, that's important to remember. Remember those days. Those days are today. Those days are these days, the exact time that we're living in. Those days are the times when we can see the two witnesses in the street for three and a half days, lying there in the street for three and a half days over smartphones, TVs, computers. And we can send each other gifts. People, people will send each other gifts in, in days, over the three and a half days. We're in those days. We're in those days where Israel has become a nation. Those days are these days. Those days are the day. And everyone from that generation is around 72, 73 years old. So those days are today. Those days are the day when no flesh can be saved because of nuclear weapons. We know this. We're in those days. Those days are today. It's right now. And we should know these things. We should know these things as children of God. We should know these things. We should know that our King, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, is coming back soon. Soon. We're supposed to be prepared. We're not supposed to be caught unaware. The Bible said, as in the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. We should be like Noah building the ark. We shouldn't be like the ones caught up in the flood. We should be like Noah building the ark, knowing, knowing the signs of the time and knowing what times we are in right now. We should know this as children of God. The Bible tells us that it's like the beginning of sorrows, like birth pains. You know, you know, start off slowly. And we see that all around us now. You can look all around us, whether it's coronavirus, and I was talking about food shortages and gas prices and inflation and the Afghanistan that fell and all sorts of volcanoes erupting and earthquakes. 
you know, China and Taiwan, Russia and the Ukraine. All these things are happening now. The, the, the rising up of uh, this system of government where you have religions, universal religions and governments connecting through climate change. All these things are coming to pass now. Uh, the beast kingdom rises from the sea. And, you know, I want to talk about that too. Uh, maybe next week, eventually, or uh, yeah, maybe next week about, because I believe the spirits of the four horsemen is present in the world today. And that's why we're seeing the beginning of sorrows and the beginning of birth pains. And I'm going to go over each one uh, and how they're present in the world today. And so it's, it's, you know, this is something that you can't put off. Like, you can't start saying that. Well, maybe I get right with God uh, next year or next month. Or that'll be my New Year's resolution.